All right, let's settle this once and for all. If you love math and coding, but you have no idea what to really do with your life, you have probably thought about becoming something like a quant, a software engineer, or a data scientist. But which one is actually the right path for you? Well, as someone who has made the, I want to say not questionable, but who knows, decision of becoming a quant developer, I'm going to break it all down for you, the good, the bad, and the brain meltingly complicated. So by the end of the video, you'll know exactly which career path fits your vibe. You can think of it as sort of a career matchmaking, but with more maths and fewer awkward dates. So here's the deal. At first glance, all three jobs seem weirdly similar. You write some code, you work with data, you get paid quite a bit, let's say, just to sit in front of a computer screen all day. But you dig a little deeper and there are actually a few nuances there. They're actually quite different, just like how a physicist, an engineer and a mathematician all technically do maths, but one builds bridges, one does experiments, and one sits in a room proving why bridges probably shouldn't fall down. So today we'll break it down into a few different sections, what a job actually does, because I swear no one explains this properly, the skills you need, spoiler, lots of maths, how much money you can make, because let's be real, you do care and which one suits your personality, aka which one will make you the happiest and richest at the same time. As I've mentioned before, the number one thing all of these career paths have in common is that you need good problem solving and critical thinking skills in order to be successful. Maybe I am biased when I say this, but I think the best way to improve on problem solving skills is by solving maths problems. So yeah, obviously you know I do love a good challenge, always, but sometimes math problems feel like they were designed just to confuse you. That's where Solvely AI comes in, whom I would really, really like to thank for sponsoring today's video. Solvely AI is a website that visually explains any study problems with graphs. It's built for understanding, not just answers. With interactive visuals, step-by-step -step breakdowns and real-time exploration, it helps you grasp even the toughest concepts. Whether you're tackling calculus, statistics or algebra, Solvely AI turns abstract ideas into something you can actually see and interact with. So let's say we have this problem where I need to figure out the percentage of bulbs that last between 900 and 1100 hours. Solvely AI instantly breaks it down, showing me a normal distribution curve with clear visualization of the probability Region. Instead of just plugging numbers into a formula, I can actually manipulate the graphs, adjust the range and see how the area under the curve changes in real time. This makes concepts like standard deviation and probability so much more intuitive. These are essential concepts if you want to be better at stuff like game theory or even interview questions. And if I'm still stuck, the built-in AI tutor is available 24-7 to explain things in more detail. Kind of like a personal tutor, but you know, way cheaper. This is honestly a game changer for anyone who wants to up their game to actually understand maths, not just get through the homework exercises. Right now you can get 20% off all subscriptions using my code Ioana or just by accessing Solvely AI using my link that you also have down in the description below. So yeah, just go to Solvely AI and start learning way smarter today. And with that, let's get right back into what makes each of these career paths unique. So I'm gonna use the term quant to mean anything from quant researcher to quant developer to quant analyst. So a quant is basically what happens when you take a maths nerd, give them a Bloomberg terminal and tell them to make money fast. They typically work in hedge funds, in investment banks and in trading firms, building mathematical models that predict market movements and price financial instruments. The end goal is to make better, faster and more profitable trades. So a typical day in the life of a quant consists in writing Python or C++ code for trading algorithms, running simulations to test strategies, aka playing very expensive video games, and arguing over whether a 1% increase in model efficiency is life-changing or should just go to the bin. Well, on the other hand, software engineers are the architects of the digital world. Whether that's building an app, designing a backend system, or even writing code for rockets, and that's you I'm talking about, SpaceX engineers. If you love problem solving and critical thinking, but don't really want financial markets breathing down your neck the whole time, this might be your thing. A typical day in the life of a software engineer would consist in writing production level code in Python, Java or C++ and by this I mean there will be a lot of actually thinking about code organization, structure and making it 
very optimal in terms of memory and time. Debugging, of course, there's so much debugging. And of course, deploying and maintaining software that actual humans use. Lastly, data scientists sit at the intersection of stats, coding and business insights. So if quants are building financial models and software engineers are making apps, well, data scientists are basically data detectives, I want to say. They take large data sets and try to extract useful information from them to squeeze in as much insight as humanly possible from that particular data set. Well, a typical day, first of all, cleaning data. There's so much work to do in cleaning data, making sure that all of the missing values are handled properly, making sure that all of the features are normalized properly and all that. So basically, yeah, that is a lot of crying over messy spreadsheets, building machine learning models and presenting results to business people who nod like they actually understand. All right, let's visualize this maths versus code battle like a classic XY chart. On the x-axis, we've got code intensity. The further right you go, the more you're staring at a blank screen covered in curly brackets. On the y-axis, we've got math intensity. The higher up you go, the more likely your job requires knowing what a stochastic process is, and more importantly, pretending that you actually understand it. So in the top right, we've got max maths, max code. These are the quants. Quants sit right here. They write hardcore optimized code, but it's all built on a ridiculous amount of maths. Think calculus, linear algebra, statistics, all of them combined. Basically every nightmare that you had in university maths, but now it makes people rich. In the bottom right, we've got max code minimal maths. These are the software engineers. Software engineers, well, they are far to the right in coding, but they don't go as high in maths for obvious reasons. You'll still need logical thinking, but you're not actually proving theorems. You're not actually doing any sort of abstract maths. You are building products that work, hopefully. In the top left corner, we've got max maths and sort of medium code. These are the data scientists. They sit a bit lower than quants in coding, but the maths is still very much up there. They use statistics, probability, and machine learning, but instead of making money directly, they convince businesses that they're making money. <laughs> and here in the minimal maths, minimal code, uh, bottom left corner, we've got the business people. Well, these people don't do much maths, they don't write much code, but they somehow get to make all of the final decisions when it comes to anything. So yeah. If you're trying to decide which career paths make sense for you, here's another way to break it down. A classic Venn diagram. You know, the thing every lecturer used when I didn't really want to explain something properly. Today I am that lecturer for you, so let's get it. I would say maths plus coding equals quant. If you love maths and you love coding, quant is definitely for you. As I've mentioned before, you're building financial models, predicting market movements and optimizing strategies. This is literally the nerd Olympics, except instead of medals, you win bonuses, which arguably sounds a bit better to me. <laughs> Coding plus business is software engineer. If you love coding, but you also care about building actual products, that's what I mean about business, by the way, software engineering makes sense for you. It makes the most amount of sense for you. You might be optimizing an app, you might be making a website run faster, or you're just fixing a lot of bugs. You get to discover and work with the latest technological gear and get very in-depth about your technological tools, which I think is really fun. So maths plus business, I would say, is data science. If you love maths and you love this business aspect of creating an actual product, I would say that data science is your path. You're playing with massive data sets, finding trends and making fancy machine learning models, which I've done in uni, it's so much fun. It's basically detective work, but with Python. Well, and if you love all three of these, you're either a genius or you're just confused. <laughs> Alright, let's talk numbers, because at the end of the day, while passion is obviously great, so is being able to afford London rent without selling a kidney. Well, quants get massive bonuses if they make their firms money. The ceiling is actually quite absurd. Some quants at top hedge funds make millions, but the stress levels are also very much for the roof, as well as the work hours. They can get quite intense. Software engineers have very stable salaries, especially at thank companies, with good work-life balance, I want to say. By which I mean they can actually get some sleep. Well, data scientists can also do very well, especially if they transition into AI or ML roles. 
big tech companies do pay a lot but if you're in a startup they might try and pay you in stock options aka in translation vibes Well, if you're still not sure which career is right for you, let's go into full tier list mode because let's be real, everything in life should be ranked. It's so much nicer, it's so much easier. So if you love maths and you love financial markets, do become a quant. You'll get to play with stochastic calculus and algorithms and if you're good, you'll actually get paid so much money. If you love coding but don't really like finance, do become a software engineer. You'll still make six figures, but instead of pricing derivatives, you'll be building apps, websites, and okay, probably debug forever, but there's still, still some fun in that. If you love AI and data, do become a data scientist. You'll work with machine learning models, analyze trends, and occasionally get asked to make the AI more human, whatever that means. So, which one do you see yourself in? Let me know down in the comments. Are you team quant, are you team software engineer, or are you team data scientist? Or are you just here for the maths memes? Either way, if you have enjoyed this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so YouTube actually shows you when my next upload is. Please do remember though that there are actually a lot more levels and nuances to this choice than I have explained. And also, you really don't need to have this all figured out when you go into your first job especially. You can easily switch between these as they all have a similar set of skills required. Alright, enough chit-chatting from me today, hope you have enjoyed, good luck in any pursuit that you are following right now, and hey, maybe follow me on Instagram for more content if you want. Alright, I'll see you in the next one. I'm sick of daydreaming, I just want the feeling of you in my bed. I'm down at this waistline, right below your waistline, want you by my head.